let me apologize right off the top by saying that I'm going to be reading mostly from a script for this. Um, it's a variation on the old saying that uh, I'm sorry this letter is so long, I didn't have time to make it short. Uh, and that's kind of what's applying here. So the first thing I want to say is that the flipped classroom is really a species of blended learning. Blended learning means mixing regular classroom teaching with technology. And you can do that without flipping your classroom. When you flip the classroom, you blend technology with regular classroom activity, but the technology part for the student happens at home, and the regular classroom part still happens, not surprisingly, in the classroom. In the flipped classroom, the idea is that the teacher makes videos, or supplies them if they're videos that were generated by someone else. They make videos of material that they might normally have delivered as a lecture in class and give students access to this outside of class. Possibly they're uploaded to YouTube or they're presented as video files that happen on a flash drive that the student can take home with them. But the main idea is that the students, the students access this material outside of class. They can watch the video at their own speed. Uh, they can watch it at a normal speed. They can speed it up and watch it more quickly if they can absorb it that quickly. They can slow it down and walk, watch it more uh, slowly if that's what they would prefer. And the other thing that they can do with this material at home is that they can rewind it and look at the material again and review it. So that gives students who are having more trouble with the material the option to go over the material again and again, an option that they wouldn't happen when I was lecturing in a normal classroom. That means students get to control the pace, and that's a key advantage here when this material that's normally delivered at one pace for all students can now be given at different paces, or not given at different paces, but can now be accessed at different paces for different in class, the students do independent work that's designed to either consolidate or extend the material that's delivered in the video lecture. Freed of the necessity of delivering the lecture in the classroom setting, the teacher can then circulate and work one-on-one -on -one with the students or small groups of them. At a high level, the flipped classroom represents a switch. It's a switch in that the teacher no longer mediates between the curriculum content and the student. Um, using technology, the student accesses the material directly, and the teacher's role in the classroom transforms into one of working directly with the students, or at least with small groups of them. The teacher's role in the classroom transforms into one of working directly with students on the problems which challenge them. In truth, this isn't a full-on transformation, since this has always been part of the teacher's classroom role. It's more of an augmentation. The flipped classroom opens up more space for this to occur. This switch is usually characterized as a change from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. I teach two different subjects, math and computer studies. In computer studies, we're already using blended learning. I will use PowerPoint to introduce and explain a new programming concept. Students will then work on independently on one or more exercises that are intended to kind of exercise that concept. They have a number of resources to help them when they're doing the exercises. They have the internet. Uh, they can consult with each other. They have access to the PowerPoint slide that they can slides that they can review themselves. And of course, they also have access to me to work one on one with. Flipping this classroom wouldn't really change things very much. I could record audio to go along with the PowerPoint, and then they could access at home uh, that material before class, and then they could use the class time exclusively for work on the exercises. In this course, however, the amount of time that's already spent in my SAGE role is really pretty small compared to the amount of time I spend in my guide role. I can see a lot more potential in the math class. Usually I start the class with a lecture and then lead students through a new concept in a structured way and work through examples as that's going on. Or after that, so new concept and then examples that demonstrate the concept. After that, students have independent work to do and I circulate and help those who are having trouble. If they don't finish the independent work, well, that's what really becomes their homework. However, what I often find is that the lecture portion takes too much time. And as a result, there's really very little time for them to do independent work in the classroom where I'm able to help them. That means that they're trying to do that independent work at home where I'm not available. And in some cases, for some students, that extra help is really important. So the consequence of that is that I'm not available to help those that need it when they're working at home. A flipped classroom has the potential to fix most of that particular problem just by freeing up more class time to work with the students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. I'm cognizant, however, of some of the pitfalls. In Reflections on the Flip Classroom, Paul Anderson points out that in order to be fully effective, a flipped classroom really needs some kind of mastery system. 
students should not move on in the curriculum until they've mastered the material at hand. And the implication of this is that I would have students at many different points in the curriculum at any given point in time. That's good from the student's point of view. They get to go through things at their own pace. But the downside for me as a teacher is that I then need some way of tracking where students are in terms of how they're progressing through the curriculum. And I have to have something that's tailored to the individual students. Now, it's not so much the extra work that that involves that I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is that that seems failure prone to me. And I'm worried that I would lose track of one or two or more students in that system. And that I might get to the end of the course and go, ooh, the student's nowhere near as far along as they need to be. And that I somehow messed that up. I would have to develop some kind of system to track that and to track student progress on a case-by-case -case basis. It could be easy for students to fall through the cracks. One of the key advantages of the flipped classroom is the space that it opens up for differentiated learning. One can imagine how easy it would be for advanced students to work on more challenging material. Hold on, Joy, that's my dog. She wants to go out and my dog, the dog we're dog sitting. One can imagine how easy it would be for advanced students to work on more challenging material while weaker ones work on simpler material. The challenge for me as a teacher would be to actually generate that range of material. The independent work that I currently have is kind of targeted at the kind of imaginary average student. But moving to a flipped classroom and maximizing the differentiation that it permits will require a significant time investment beyond the creation of videos. That said, of all the kind of new technology things that I've been exposed to over the years and in this course so far. This is the one I'd like to try most. I think it would be fairly easy to generate some videos. I could actually just record what I'm already doing in the class. Come on, Joy, come on over here. Come on. Yeah. I could just record what I'm doing in the class. And then I could use that the next time around that I teach the course. So maybe it would be a fairly low time investment from the from the point of view of generating that material. So it's a good idea. I want to give it a try. Thank you very much.